This is ABC 7 News at 11, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Matter. Topping our news tonight, parts of the Sun Coast continue to be very active with wildfires, even though we're only a month into the new year. Fire officials say we have not seen this many wildfires this early on in several years, including five that have occurred in Sarasota County and three in Manatee County. ABC 7's Rick Adams has more tonight from the Florida Forest Service office in Bradenton. Well, it certainly has been very busy for folks here. In the last month alone, there have been nearly two dozen wildfires in the five county region that they cover, which does include Sarasota and Manatee counties. In the month of January, there were a total of 22 wildfires in the region comprised of Sarasota, Manatee, Charlotte, Hardy, and DeSoto counties. Officials from the Florida Forest Service Mayaka District say that's at least a dozen more compared to January of last year. The majority of them have been illegal burns. Uh, there's been a couple of them that's been caused by equipment or children. Uh, there's still a handful that's still under investigation. And so it's just kind of, you know, a little hodgepodge of different things so far. Mahoney says wildfire season in Florida is year round because of how dry it can be. And usually they see many more wildfires beginning towards the end of February. Here are a few images from a recent wildfire in southern Sarasota County. What's made things even more difficult battling these fires is the debris that's left over from Hurricane Irma. We're having to change our tactics in fighting a fire. A lot of trees are down and, you know, we've had a couple freezes. So now you've got, you know, dead vegetation that's on the ground on top of the downed vegetation and so it's just getting harder and harder to access the fires. The Florida Forest Service has these tips for folks to prevent wildfires. Make sure your roofs and cutters are cleaned out. Make sure that you've got a 30 foot defensible space around your home. You know, make sure that you don't have the mulch that you have around your house. It's not pine needles. And for all the information you need to know about wildfires here in our region, you can log on to our website at mysuncoast.com. Reporting from Bradenton, I'm Rick Adams, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Okay, thank you so much, Rick. When Hurricane Irma hit the Sunshine State, gas became exceedingly precious, and now an effort to stockpile fuel reserves around Florida is gaining momentum. Drawing support in its first Senate committee today, a nine-member task force would recommend a plan for the state to meet both private and public fuel needs during natural emergencies and major disasters. Florida struggled to keep up with fuel demand during Hurricane Irma last year as 6.5 million people were ordered to evacuate their homes. Drivers spending up to 12 hours on routes that typically are covered in six or seven hours. The situation growing worse as ports where fuel enters the state were closed due to the high winds. You saw the pictures of the highway where the highway patrol was uh, taking one side of the highway was packed back to back and then the other side was uh, moving the tankers through there uh, trying to get the fuel. The task force would be appointed evenly by the governor, the president of the Senate and the House Speaker. Well, a little bit out of a colder night, but not as cold as last night. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Bob Perry. Each night progressively warmer tonight, not nearly as chilly as this morning. And a couple of nights ago, we had wind chills in the 30s. Now, different story tomorrow morning, uh, a few degrees above average, actually. And we're watching some clouds rolling in from the west to the east associated with that jet stream. Very active subtropical jet stream uh, continues to rip overhead. So it's a mid to upper level cloudiness uh, right now with the satellite and the goes east product right there. And it looks as though we will see uh, no real threat of any rainfall with this. But as it makes its way to the east and southeast, uh, those systems will eventually uh, moisten up a little bit. But that won't happen until Sunday, I think. We'll see a low pressure develop. There is a cold front out here, and it continues to fall to the south now and move into our area. It will move into our area Friday evening, basically, bringing with it an increase in clouds. Right now, we do have partly cloudy skies, still pretty mild, 61 degrees out there. The dew point at 53. Winds are out of the northeast at 5. The pressure continues to rise at 3020 right now, and the winds are rather light and a variable for the most part out of the north northeast at five miles an hour in Inglewood, four at Warm Mineral Springs and Northport a little less than that. The uh, planner for tomorrow looks good for your commute. No significant problems, no fog problems around. Temperatures warming up quite nicely in the afternoon to 74 degrees. We'll talk about that cold front 
and what it means for our weekend weather as well as another one moves in. Details on that coming up in a few minutes. Back to you, Jacqueline. Okay, thank you, Bob. Members of the community gathered in Bradenton tonight to discuss several key issues facing the area. Included, included in those issues, tensions between the African American community and law enforcement, getting involved in local government, and most notably, the Florida Department of Transportation's proposal to replace the DeSoto Bridge with what's being called a flyover. The flyover would involve elevating the roadway so that it would be constructed above First Street in downtown Bradenton and then extend over the Manatee River. But not everyone in the community is on board. Rodney Jones, the president of the Manatee County NAACP, says he is displeased with how FDOT is gathering community input on that plan. Currently 64,000 cars travel down this road. They claim that 33% 33, 33 of those are uh, regional traffic. We did, still don't have a good um, definition of regional traffic. There's been no economic impact study, nothing that has been presented to us. They just want to run it down uh, First uh, Street because they said it is the best performer. It moves the most traffic, and we're just not going for it. Manatee County Sheriff Rick Wells was also in attendance at tonight's meeting, listening to all of the concerns from the community. Longboat Key Police are investigating a possible homicide after a woman was found dead inside a sauna at the Longboat Key Club moorings. Inside this poolside clubhouse is where a 54-year-old Sarasota woman was found dead. The door remains chained shut tonight as police still work to determine how she died. Police say they have ruled out a natural or accidental cause of death, and with obvious signs of trauma, Chief Peter Cummings says that leaves homicide or suicide as the last possibilities. The initial autopsy results came back inconclusive. The medical examiner has sent away DNA and other evidence for lab work. We are putting all available resources on this uh, and uh, investigating every possibility, interviewing any potential witnesses. And again, with the evidence out at the lab, we're waiting for results of that too. So we're working this uh, pretty much around the clock. The victim's name is still unknown. Police not willing to release that information until they can rule out that it was not a suicide. The man charged in the 2011 death of a woman back in court today. 54-year-old William Case is charged with homicide in the death of Karen Quartz. Detectives say they linked Case to the murder through DNA in a shoe impression found at the scene. Case's attorney had previously requested a mistrial, saying his client was incompetent. And today, a judge finding a case still is incompetent to stand trial. A new report released by the Florida Senate says while the state is sending fewer people to prison than in the past, those who end up behind bars are staying there for a longer time. The study from the Crime and Justice Institute based in Boston found that the per capita incarceration rate in Florida is more than 20 percent higher than the national average. According to that report, a combination of minimum mandatory sentences and a strict release threshold are keeping those numbers high even for low level criminals. The report recommends reclassifying felony drug possession as a misdemeanor, increasing the felony theft threshold, and eliminating a requirement that nonviolent offenders serve at least 85% of their sentence. The verdict just in tonight in that high-profile trial in Hawaii, a yoga instructor charged with killing her twin sister, just found not guilty of second-degree murder. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez has more. Alexandria Duval wiping away tears in the courtroom after the yoga instructor was acquitted of killing her twin sister and business partner Anastasia. The court will enter a judgment of acquittal. The defendant is discharged. In 2016, the sisters were seen arguing as Alexandria drove this SUV in Maui. How can you see that the driver kind of like this was her hair being pulled? Prosecutors alleged Alexandria then intentionally rammed the vehicle into a wall before driving it off this 200-foot cliff. Here you see her being pulled to safety by rescuers. Anastasia died in the passenger seat. The defense maintained it was an accident. You can't imagine losing your twin sister in that kind of a tragic, uh, catastrophic accident and then being charged with the murder of your sister, which you didn't do. And she's, I think, just very relieved at this point and is going to get on with her life. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. The worst flu season in a decade will cost U.S. employers at least $15 billion as workers call in sick and lost productivity costs could rise to as much as $21 billion if flu activity does not ease up. 
That's according to a new report released by a U.S. employment firm. The flu season is already approaching levels seen in the pandemic of 2014, which affected about 18 million workers. So far, more than 30 million people have been affected, and this year's flu season is expected to last for several more weeks. We'll stay with us. Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan will be back with your first alert forecast. Plus, the approval of a big event in Venice draws mixed feelings from the community. And two local nonprofits team up, putting their math skills to the test to help shelter animals. My name is Luke Perry, and I am one million strong. I'm in the fight against colorectal cancer because I believe we can win it. Colon and rectal cancers are the second leading cause of cancer deaths among men and women in the U.S. Colon cancer is preventable. Know the risk factors and make sure to get screened. There are simple take-home options available. Take control of your health. Screening for colon cancer isn't embarrassing. It can be life-saving. To find out more about your options, visit fightcrc.org. Our overall experience working with California Closets was phenomenal. Calm, reassuring. Through happenstance, we ended up paired with our designer, Jen. She was someone who not only was patient, someone who was professional. She's become extended family. She had great insight to help direct me towards those things that could make our dreams come true. We are the Greens, and this is our California Closet story. Meet Blue. Blue's not feeling well. The prescription? Generic medication. Blue wonders, do they really work as well as name brands? Yes, generics and name brand medications do work the same. Even though they may look different, generics have the same key ingredients. FDA approval is equally rigorous for generics to make sure they're as safe and effective as name brands. And Blue even saves some green, making him a little less, well, blue. Talk to your doctor about generics and visit FDA.gov slash generic drugs. My life motto is keep moving. And as hard as it was when my husband passed away, I knew I had to keep doing what I love. Oops, coming. But I needed help, help with my insurance, and that's what the NAIC provides. They have resources to help you and your family make the best decision, and they'll help you to keep moving forward, just like me. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Army National Guard soldiers serve to give back to their country and their community. Their part-time commitment qualifies them for benefits such as health and life insurance, education benefits, and retirement and VA home loan benefits. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. A regatta planned for September in Venice is already getting some pushback on social media. The Sarasota Scholars Youth Rowing Regatta will be held on Saturday, September 15th. Some boaters are unhappy that the event will close off the intracoastal waterway for nearly a day. People on social media have said that the event should be held at Nathan Benderson Park and not in Venice, but others were happy to have the event and the economic benefits it might bring with it. I think anything to do is to celebrate and bring in people and, and, and uh, bring in some revenue to the, to the area is fantastic. The boat ramp at the Venice train depot is also expected to be closed during that regatta. Floridians would stop changing their clocks twice a year. That's if some state lawmakers get their way. Americans move their clocks up one hour each spring and then move them back in the fall for daylight saving time. A House panel today approving the bill, which will now head to the full House. But the Florida legislature doesn't have that final say. Congress would need to amend existing federal law to allow for that change. The Senate version of the bill also calls for moving the entire state into the eastern time zone. Currently, Northwest Florida is in the central time zone. 
Bob, tomorrow we have Groundhog Day, right? That's right. I'm it's happening. Yeah, we'll get a little it. forecast okay. on the Groundhog. That's right. Punxsutawney Phil, <laughs> whether he or uh, he sees a shadow or not, uh, we'll have that. It looks like we will see some shadows around here. Some sunshine will be in the forecast. Look at this sunshine. This is sunset. Bonnie capturing this. The Van Wazel with the uh, the big pelican looks like uh, flying on by, soaring by with the high cirrus clouds. Out ahead there, and looks as though we, after that happened, the moon came up just after 7.30. And David getting this nice shot of a near full moon. I think it's 96% uh, in full effect there. So, again, appreciate those photos. Send them to pics at mysuncoast.com. And as far as the satellite and radar imagery goes, you can see a frontal boundary quite clearly uh, outlined by the showers moving through the lower Mississippi Valley from Louisiana up and through northern portions of Georgia tonight. And then a little stream of energy, the jet stream, if you will, the subtropical jet stream moving to the south. Well, there it is, a 90% chance for clouds with no sun. And what that means is, for the most part, Buxitani Phil will probably not see his shadow uh, to start things off. But you never know. I've seen cloudy days where they said, yeah, you saw, you saw a shadow. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But uh, if he doesn't see a shadow, that means an early spring. If he does see a shadow, that means six more weeks of winter. Doesn't matter to us. We uh, have enjoyed the winter. It's been uh, back and forth uh, as far as cold weather goes, but that front will approach our area and we'll take this high pressure ridge and kind of bump it out of here. So that's going to move around. And then this uh, cold front will come down. It will sink in our direction. But notice what happens. The rain, for the most part, goes away. We'll see clouds around. And that's good news for Lakewood Ranch as we have music on Main tomorrow. And Saturday, that east wind returns. We get a little cloudiness around 530. Uh, you'll see a mixture of sun and clouds throughout the day. Not much chance for rain on either Friday or Saturday. Sunday, a different story, though, as another front and storm system develops in the Gulf of Mexico. Right now, it's mild, 61 degrees. Northeast winds at 5, the pressure 30, 20. That's on the rise. The high today was a few degrees above average at 75 degrees. Well, Wednesday, while well, we saw what Wednesday did, this is actually Friday. We're looking for partly cloudy skies. Uh, throughout the day with high temperatures warming into the low 70s. Different story if you look at Minneapolis. They're hosting the Super Bowl and boy, it's not too super. Minus one right now there. 11 in Chicago, 19 in St. Louis. Another little lobe of cold Arctic air has moved down into the Great Lakes and the upper Mississippi Valley. This will continue to push off to the east though. And tomorrow's high temperatures, a big 15 in Minneapolis, 22 in the Windy City and Toronto will get up to 15 degrees. So for boaters tomorrow, not bad for us. North winds 5 to 10 knots and boating conditions will be pretty good too uh, throughout the weekend. The water temperature now at 60 degrees. UV index will be a 7. Well, here we go as far as the forecast goes and what we're concerned with here. Uh, Friday, uh, of course, Groundhog Day. We will see nice weather. High temperature 73 degrees, partly cloudy skies. And uh, as far as the event goes with music on Main at Lakewood Ranch, we will see Decent weather, a mixture of uh, clouds and now and again, so partly cloudy skies. It started off at 6 o'clock. That's when the music starts, 66 degrees. We'll probably cool into the low 60s for that. And then uh, Lisa Riding's the band there. And then on Sunday, we'll have to keep an eye on that, 40% chance for rainfall. Uh, in fact, uh, the uh, Saturday looks good at 72, but 40% uh, chance for showers, mainly in the afternoon. Here's one particular model, the GFS, showing that rain advancing on Sunday. For the most part, the morning looks to be okay. We will see the showers, it looks like, but this particular model coming after 4 or 5 o'clock. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that for you right now. It doesn't appear that we'll see a whole lot of rainfall, not like we saw this past Sunday. And then the rest of the forecast, look at this, mid-70s all the way through Thursday, 74. And remember, Monday is National Weather Person's Day. I expect to see some cards coming in for that. Well, I had a chance to go out and do a little fishing last Sunday in the morning, in fact, and uh, we got out of Annie's uh, bait shop there near Cortez and Jay Riley, Trip Schwank and myself, along with Mackenzie Bella, took off to catch the fish. And sure enough, uh, we did manage to get some with some shrimp. They weren't biting all that much, but Jay Riley catches this bonnethead shark out there in the Gulf of Mexico. And it looked like uh, it was an interesting catch. They only usually get to about three to four feet as far as that goes. And Mackenzie, uh, Mac, was uh, interested in seeing that. Didn't want to touch it. Skin's really quite different uh, from that uh, normal fish. As you see right there, we released it and not a problem. And Captain Scott Moore had some tips. The big hot thing's been sheephead anyway, but they're catching some trout. On, you know, they're fishing the potholes on the edge of the channels. That, uh, the trout have been laying in them. And the redfish, if you're a kayak fisherman, that's this is the time of year to catch redfish because redfish get really shallow. 
Right. Uh, uh, pretty technical. They'll get around the docks and stuff. Serendipitous to see him there, and he have, gave us a little tip that morning. Anyway, Mackenzie and Trip Schwank right there had a great time this past weekend, and fishing should be good this weekend as well. Captain Alan Roth is sending this in from Magic Fishing Adventures. A, looks like a permit caught, and a rather large one at that. Nice catch. And trade eats. Uh, some Lane Snapper and Bay Walker, too. Those are 21 inch, and those are tasty. Some fishing going on. It's a little slow. But we heard from uh, Captain Scott Moore, who's vacationing down down in the Everglades. But uh, he said that the uh, sheep's head are biting now. You got to find them off there in some of the artificial reefs. You, if you can get through the pinfish, that's what we had a problem okay. getting through the pinfish. They're taking our bait. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Bob. Yeah. Looked like you guys had a great time. We sure did. All right. Well, a group of girls are changing the lives of some shelter animals on the Sun Coast, and they're doing it using math. Girls Inc. of Sarasota County teaming up with Nate's Honor Animal Rescue to create custom fit fleece blankets for the animals. When it's winter time, it's probably cold for these dogs, and so we got a blanket, and then we were going to make them nice and warm during the winter. They had to figure out the exact dimensions of the bed, what the uh, template would look like, the measurements, how many blankets would come from a bolt of fabric, how many could they create, and then do all the work to make the, uh, the blankets. Certainly impressive there, 113 blankets were made for those animals. We'll stay with us, sports is next, but first here's what's coming up on Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> Peyton Manning is the only NFL player that looks like the mascot of the team for which he plays. Hashtag horse face. Perfect. Rose takes her volunteering for Tidewell Hospice very seriously. But she knows how to have fun, too. And that's what she brings when we're invited to visit patients as part of Tidewell's pet therapy program. People love to see her. She really brightens their day. She makes people smile, and in end-of-life care, a smile can be a wonderful gift. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. Coast Guard, we are taking on water. The United States Coast Guard. They secure our ports and waterways, protect our environment, keep drugs away from our kids, and save lives. It's dangerous work, and in times of triumph, or tragedy. The Coast Guard Foundation answers the call to support Coast Guard members and their families. Learn more at CoastGuardFoundation.org. This is your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Um, yeah, I have questions. Prescription drugs aren't as bad as street drugs, right? Weed's legal, isn't it? Drinking is worse than smoking weed. Isn't it? Why it is heroin, heroin so, so addictive? Molly just makes you feel happy. I have questions. Mom? Dad, did you ever try drugs? They're going to ask. Be ready. Go to drugfree.org. A message from Partnership for Drug Free Kids. Selfless service is the principle that guides Army National Guard soldiers to be ready whenever disaster strikes. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. Selfless service. It's what inspires the men and women of the Army National Guard to be part of something greater than themselves. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to go out there to raid. Here get wet. All right, here we go. go. Oh, yeah, yes. So much fun.
Here's today's job of the day. ABC7 is seeking a part-time media controller to manage various stages of video on-air content playout. General computer skills are an absolute must. Visit mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to apply. Now, sports. The Tampa Bay Lightning's worst loss this season was a 5-1 defeat to the Calgary Flames. Those two teams playing tonight in Calgary as the Bolts try to even the season series. Let's take a look at that game. The game is in the third. The Lightning and the Flames have been fairly neck and neck all night, but the Lightning have pulled ahead. They are up 6-4 currently. New safety precautions coming to Major League Baseball par parks. Major League Baseball are making that announcement today that all 30 Major League ballparks will have expanded protective netting that reaches to at least the far ends of each dugout by opening day. MLB issued recommendations for protective nettings or screens in December of 2015, encouraging teams to have it put in place between the ends of the dugouts closest to home plate. The push for an expansion increased last year after a series of spectator injuries. And some big news today out of the Super Bowl. Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski has been cleared from the concussion protocol and will play in Sunday's game against the Philadelphia Eagles. Gronkowski participated fully in practice today and he says he's ready to go. I mean, I was just going through the protocol, whatever the standards were, whatever they had uh, had me do uh, throughout the weeks. I mean, I would say they were more on the cautious side of getting me out there right away with the bye week and everything in between, which definitely helped out big time. But uh, just did every step by step every day and uh, everything went smooth and uh, officially got the word today that I was clear. So it was super nice to hear uh, from the doctors going through the whole process and ready to roll. So make sure to get your plans together. The big game for the Super Bowl is this Sunday. That's a look at spot. sports. We'll have tonight's winning lotto numbers when we come back. My California Closets designer is a rock star. She was able to design the most beautiful space for me. When I turn the lights on, it's breathtaking. La! It's just a little slice of organized heaven. The California Closet team was so professional, so reliable. It was seriously a dream come true. My name is Jill, and this is my California Closet story. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. I mean, you not love him. at four on Suncoast View. We're getting ready for Valentine's Day and you're gonna love how we spice things up. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. We'll start by shopping with Giggles, a Suncoast adult novelty store. Our lovebirds John Scalzi and Linda Larson co-host and tell us about their stage reprisal of the play Love Letters. Our beauty expert is back to help us look great and Peak Performance Catering joins us in the kitchen. Tomorrow at four on Suncoast View. Designers do it with style. Tell me what's going on here. Because Why you don't like my hair? The Mark and Mandy Show. In-depth design ideas. What is up with the tuck tape here? Let's cover it up. Amazing beauty and fashion tips. So Halle Berry has amazing skin. She Her secret it. is coffee ground. No. Delicious recipes. Today I'm going to show you a special dish that is sure to please that special someone in your life. Watch the Mark and Mandy Show right here on your favorite channel. <laughs> So I kind of grew up all across the country. I come from five generations of military men. My dad is still active duty. My grandpa is retired Marines. I like going for runs with my dog. I love, you know, taking her out to the dog beach over in Venice. There are so many things here to do on the Sun Coast. My goal every day when I come into work at ABC7 is to tell your stories, give you that major local news and those details that you really care about. I'm Jacqueline Matter and I'm here for you. 
Watch Good Morning Suncoast on ABC7, weekdays starting at 5. The Florida Lottery winning numbers are sponsored by Frontier Fios. Well, in Suncoast tradition, the resident manatees at Moat Marine Laboratory in Sarasota have made their predictions on who will win this year's Super Bowl. Buffett and Hugh are trained daily at Moat Marine, which is how they were able to make their picks. Buffett chose the Eagles to win the big game, while Hugh chose the Patriots. Buffett is pretty good at this, though. He has picked the winner correctly in eight of the last ten Super Bowls. So I guess we will just have to wait and see. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, and I heard her earlier that uh, Buffett made the prediction last year and was uh, wrong, actually, not picking the uh, Patriots. We'll yeah. see. I mean, the Patriots, how can you go against them, right? I don't know. They have a pretty good record. Absolutely. Here's what our weather looks like. We have a good record here during this time of year. We're looking at mid-70s by later in the afternoon. Be sure to tune in to a Good Morning Sun Coast. And John Scalzi have the latest on the other fronts coming our way. All right. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow.